everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing preeclampsia. So what is preeclampsia? Preeclampsia is a disorder of the placenta. And what's kind of special about it is it's pretty common. Uh, people have it, I would say like, I think the statistic is like 7% of all pregnancies can result in preeclampsia. But we're not 100% sure what causes it to happen, which is really interesting. Basically, the idea is the spiral arteries of the uterus, they need to remodel themselves. They need to dilate and get bigger to allow for more blood flow to the placenta. In preeclampsia, they don't do that. Okay, so in a normal pregnancy, they do, and in preeclampsia, they don't dilate enough or they even constrict, making it smaller, so decreasing our blood flow to the placenta. And we're not 100% sure why that happens, but it's not a good thing. So let's jump into some things about preeclampsia. The first is, who's at risk? Who's more likely to get preeclampsia? And before I say this, I want to let you know that Preeclampsia is one of those things, it can happen to anybody. It can happen to any mom, any pregnancy. Usually it happens in your first pregnancy, but you could be fine your first baby, second baby, and all of a sudden your third baby, now you have preeclampsia. So it's just kind of one of those things that happens. But there are some risk factors. So of course the biggest one, people who've had it before, right? If you had something before, you're more likely to have it again if you already have a hypertensive disorder. So if you are a mom who has chronic hypertension already, you are more likely to have preeclampsia. Those who are age extremes, and what I mean by that is the very young and the slightly older. So it's like the teen moms, so younger than 19, they're more likely to have preeclampsia, and over 35 are more likely to have preeclampsia. But again, you could still get it at 25. The obese, and then those who are pregnant with multiples, so twins, triplets, etc. How is this diagnosed? So, you need to have at minimum two blood pressures that are greater than 140 over 90. Those need to be taken at least four to six hours apart. And then you have to have some of the other signs and symptoms. So the other signs and symptoms part is very, very important when it comes to preeclampsia. Because you could be a pregnant woman who has elevated blood pressure, but that could be chronic hypertension, right? You had it before you're pregnant. Or it could be gestational hypertension, where you're having this high blood pressure with your pregnancy, but it's not preeclampsia. So very important distinctions we need to make there. For it to be considered preeclampsia, not only do you have to have the blood pressure issues, you also have to have protein in your urine and then edema. And when I'm saying edema, I'm not talking about like the normal edema, like the swelling in your feet and stuff like that. I'm talking about like your hands are swollen, your face is swollen, okay? So that kind of edema. So we kind of call that the, the triad. So P-R-E is how you can remember it. So P, protein in the urine. R is for rising blood pressure. And then the E is for the edema. So those are like the three big cardinal signs of preeclampsia. And that's how you can identify it as opposed to like gestational hypertension or chronic hypertension. Other symptoms, headache, visual disturbances, visual changes. This is when we're getting a little worried, okay? So if mom has preeclampsia and we know about it and she starts saying like, I'm seeing spots or I've lost my vision, I've lost peripheral vision, everything is kind of blurry, that might precede a seizure. So we really need to know that stuff about mom. Nausea and vomiting. Epigastric pain. This is another one that's huge. This is not normal pyrosis heartburn that comes with uh, pregnancy. This is a different kind of pain. This is more like chest pain, okay? So like mid-sternal chest pain. This is another like warning sign of severe preeclampsia that could turn into something called eclampsia, which we'll talk about. They are hyperreflexive, so you're gonna do your DTRs. So if you're wondering why labor nurses walk around with the little uh, reflex hammer, that's why, because they're taking care of preeclamptic patients. 
So they'll be hyperreflexive and they might have something called clonus. To assess clonus on your patient, take the palm of your hand and place it on the sole of their foot and then have them dorsiflex back. If you feel a pulsation or like a little beat back on your palm, that means the patient is positive for clonus. Clonus is graded as plus one, plus two, etc. Plus one meaning you would feel one beat back, plus two would be two beats back, and so forth. Clonus is not a good thing. It's not something we want to have on our patients. It is a precursor to a potential seizure. And then finally, they'll have algeria, so lower urine output less than 30 mLs an hour. So what do you, as the nurse, need to know about these patients? What can you do to help them? Of course, the big one is we're going to monitor their blood pressure, right? INO, because we want to check for that algeria. Daily weights, so if they're in the hospital setting, if it's bad enough that they're like antepartum and they're hospitalized, we're going to weigh them daily, same time every day. Or if they can kind of manage at home, teaching them that they have to weigh themselves every day at the same time. Any like sudden weight gain, like five pounds or more in a day, which does happen with these patients, needs to be reported right away. Seizure precautions. So the big, big thing about preeclampsia is we want to manage it so it doesn't become eclampsia, which is everything with preeclampsia, but now we're having seizures, okay? And of course, we don't want to have seizures. So seizure precautions if they're hospitalized. So dimming the lights, patting the side rails, low simulation, all of that stuff. Lots and lots of teaching for mom. The more compliant mom is with the education and the treatment regimen, the better her outcomes are going to be. So really good teaching is really important. She's going to be on bed rest, either at home or in the hospital, and ideally in the left lateral, so left side lying position, because that's best for placental blood flow. Emotional support, because this is worrisome, right? This is a condition that nobody expects to have. So emotional support is going to be really important for mom and dad. Of course, we're going to be monitoring the baby. Our head to toe, we're going to do a thorough head to toe just like we would on any of our patients, but special things we're going to pay attention to. Deep tendon reflexes, because they're going to be hyperreflexive, right? Our clonus. Listening to lung sounds at least every two hours on these patients, especially if they have severe form of preeclampsia. Why? Pulmonary edema. And then observing for any of these signs and symptoms, okay? So the epigastric pain, the visual changes, the intense headaches, the photophobia, all that stuff, red flags. And then we might end up doing a 24-hour urine on these patients. So what happens is you go to your prenatal checkup, right? The pregnant woman goes to her prenatal checkup and she gets her blood pressures done. And then we see, okay, it's elevated. And we do a urine and then we see, oh yes, there's protein in the urine. And sometimes for the doctor, that's enough. That's all they need. They're happy. We're going to diagnose you with preeclampsia. Sometimes they need a little bit more. Okay, so in that case, they might order something called a 24-hour urine. And if the woman is competent and compliant, she might be able to do that at home. Sometimes they are not, and they need to be hospitalized, and we need to help them. Basically, we're collecting all of their urine for 24 hours. We're going to put it either in the refrigerator or keep it on ice, and we're going to send all of that down to the lab. So some patients need assistance with the 24-hour urine. When it comes to treatments, we have a variety of things, and usually we're going to do all of these together. So antihypertensives, hydralazine, labetalol. Those are the big two, okay? Those are the most commonly prescribed. Magnesium sulfate. So magnesium sulfate is an anticonvulsant. So we use it so that mom does not have a seizure. And actually, I'm going to do a whole other video just on mag sulfate because it is kind of like an intense and important medication to know. So mag sulfate, we use this if we're thinking mom has severe preeclampsia that might turn into eclampsia, which is seizures. Bed rest. Bed rest doesn't make it better, um, but it might slow the progression of it getting worse and worse. And then the number one best treatment, really the only cure for this disease, is delivery. And why is that? 
because the problem is the placenta, right? So fixing the problem means getting rid of the placenta. Really important things we need to think about when we're considering delivery are how far along mom is. So is this a preterm baby? Is this a term baby? And then also how poorly is mom being affected by this? Some women, they have mild preeclampsia. Most women who get preeclampsia get mild preeclampsia and they are able to deliver their babies 37 weeks and beyond, okay? In some cases where they have severe preeclampsia, the only thing to do to save mom from her organs shutting down, especially her liver and her kidneys, is um, delivery, okay? So depending on how far along baby is and how poorly this is affecting mom's quality of life, that's when we kind of decide like, okay, are we gonna deliver her? Are we gonna wait and see what happens? HELP syndrome, which is associated with severe preeclampsia, is a series of test results that kind of can indicate like, okay, this is actually more serious than we thought. HELP syndrome is not common, okay? So preeclampsia, super common, but usually that's mild, okay? HELP syndrome, not so common. So what does that mean? H stands for hemolysis, so we'll see this. EL, so elevated liver enzymes, so our AST and our ALT. Our AST will be a greater than 70, and our ALT will be greater than 50. And then also these patients will present with low platelet counts, so less than 100,000. If they have HELP syndrome, we're going to keep a closer eye on them because they're more likely to turn into eclamptic patients. And literally that's the whole point of nursing care for the patient with preeclampsia. We can't make their preeclampsia go away until the placenta is out, until they deliver. We can kind of manage symptoms, but our whole job is to prevent the preeclampsia from turning into eclampsia. Eclampsia is you've had the preeclampsia and now it's just gotten so out of control. The blood pressures are so crazy. We're seeing all this other end organ damage, like as evidenced by our liver enzymes, that now your central nervous system is getting way too involved and you're going to start having seizures. And you could possibly go into a coma and die. Okay, so this is very serious. This is a medical emergency when this happens. So what are we going to do? We're going to give magnesium sulfate if they weren't already on it, and then we're going to deliver this baby. And this case, we're not thinking about like, oh, well, maybe baby's not far along enough. We don't care, okay? So if your baby is 24 weeks and you're eclamptic, you're having a seizure, you're having the baby, okay? In preeclampsia, we can kind of like, hmm, maybe let's weigh the benefits and risks. Let's see what happens, right? When it gets to this point, that's it, okay? No more seizures. You have one, one's too many, you're done. You're having this baby. This is an emergency, okay? So our big goal is to prevent this from happening in the first place. So that was my video on preeclampsia. Remember, mild preeclampsia is fairly common. HELP syndrome and eclampsia are not common, okay? So we don't expect to see them. Our goal is to prevent them from happening in the first place. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know, and if not, I'll see you in the next one.